YouTube Nation, my people from all over, welcome back to the show. And for everybody who's first time tuning in, please like, share, and subscribe. Before I get off into this video, let me go ahead and give a special shout out to my man, Kenneth H. Diaz Jr. Man, thanks for watching my video, bro. I'm humbled to know that my videos help you make it. And for everybody else, I didn't read in the comments, people say like, listen to my videos on the way to work, stuff like that, man. I'm humble when y'all say that kind of stuff. I appreciate it, man. I'm glad I'm able to help, man. I'm glad I'm able to help instead of destroy. Let me give another shout out to my bro, big bro, Midnight. What it do, fame? Where my homie, Big Midnight? And shout out to the homie T-Bam, level five neighborhood, and the homies from West Covina once again. Man, so let me go in and dig into this. Let me say this first. I give shout outs because everybody deserves a shout out, in my opinion, because everybody is somebody. You don't got to be this big old figure to be deserve a shout out. You know what I mean? You ain't got to be like this hell of a monster, this notorious gang member, this notorious athlete or whatever deserve a shout out because you're somebody too, bro. You're somebody to your family, your kids, and that's more important than being somebody in the arena of bullshit. Get it? Streets and shit like that. As long as you're somebody to your family. So that's why I give y'all shout outs, man. Whoever else I forgot. Oh, shout out to my homies. All my people out there in Austin, Texas for tuning in. I appreciate the love I'm getting from y'all as well. Shout out to everybody in the UK. I appreciate the love I'm getting from y'all as well. And all my folks out in the continent of Africa. Appreciate that, bro. I really appreciate that Africa be tuning in with love. Now let's get into this story. This story going to take place back in 1991. I was in Old Folsom State Prison, Repressor, California, which is part of Sacramento, California. I was up here at the time. I was on my crib shit. I was really banging the fuck out. I really wasn't dealing with a lot of bloods at the time. I was kind of anti-sociable in a sense. I was just on some crib shit. I was young. 1991, I was 21. I was just getting out the hole for my first time doing like a little suspended shoot turn from assault I called in Jamestown. So I'm, I'm up here in Old Folsom. But at this time in particular, I think I had went to court. So this is what happened. Uh, during the time they was filming American Me and Old Folsom, I was up there at that time, 1991. Yeah, 91. I leave from Building 1. Building 1 used to be considered the shoe build in the back. It had like, it was like built for the shoe. It was like pretty much, I want to say the biggest building there, but I can't say that. But it was, it was huge, probably it. But anyway, yeah, it was the biggest building in Old Folsom. Hell yeah, one building is the biggest. But anyway, I'm in, I'm in Building 1. I'm in a cell with the homie Kilo from Six Deuce East Coast. I go back to court. I got a child custody case going on. So I, they sent me back to the L.A. County Jail. When I go back to the L.A. County Jail, Old Folsom is on this. If you're pulling up in this prison, on your left, you see the historic, the famous arch in the towers of Folsom State Prison, the old brick side. You pull up in there. Then you go around the curve to your right, then you be in New Folsom. So, uh, when you first get there, we all go to New Folsom. We all go to A facility. That's reception. That's kind of like orientation today, place where you're going to go. So anyway, we come out, old folks from out the gate. They got the L.A. County Jail bus out there. I come out there. I'm going to court now. Mind you, I'm going to the L.A. County Jail for a child custody situation with my son back then, 1991, leaving old folks from state prison. So when you walk out, they walk me out the gate right there. Down this road where I just mentioned where it say old folks from the new folks, right? I come out, I get on the bus. I'm on the bus with the homie Warlock from 98 Main Street. Shout out Warlock. I hope he got out. You know what I'm saying? But shout out Warlock. Anyway, me and Warlock go down to the county jail. I'm in the county. I do my thing. Child custody situation. Wow. I come back to Folsom. A yard. Process back. Back to old Folsom. Bring it up to speed now. I just wanted to give y'all a little history for y'all could see the route where I went through and all that, right? Yo, so I'm back in Old Folsom. They send me to Building Five. I ain't really got. Like, yeah, I do got my property. I got my property because as soon as I get back, I get my property out of R and R, and I throw on my outfit. <laughs> my outfit is what shorts, t-shirt, chucks, skull hat. That's how I rolled around up there at the time. So they put me in Building Five. They put me in this cell, and I trip. Building 5, everybody know what Old Folsom, they know how Building 5 is. Old Folsom, Building 5 is the dungeons. Them cells is like just two tiers, but the cell is like real dungeons with holes like this on every door. But they were the bigger cells in there. Actually, Building 5 was kind of the better building in a sense because the cells was wider considered to, compared to the other cells in Old Folsom Prison. They all smaller. I've never been to four building in Old Folsom. I don't know what they cells look like. Actually, four building is kind of hidden. If you don't know what four building is at in Old Folsom, you don't know because you pass by when you're going through from the 
building two to the child hall and it's somewhere behind there between four and three. I don't know. I started out in three and I ended up in one. I went to court and I came back. Now I'm in five. So they throw me in building five. No, they throw me in building three first, right? This one, uh, Key to Rock from 60s is up in there. Peabody from Denver Lane was up in there. I go to building, back to building three. And then they they mad at this dude over in building five, this blood dude. So they they they, they want to split up him and his celly. So they bring his celly over, put his celly in building three, my cell. And they put me to building five in his cell. This blood dude named D-Dog from Black P-Stone. So I go up in here. I don't know whose cell this is. I'm up in there. Once I get in the cell, I open the door, I get in the cell, I see the red rag. Like, whoa. <laughs> like, whoa. Now, this is the first time I ever experienced being in the cell with blood. I had never experienced it at this point. At this point, before this point, I was like all other young cats who be talking that madness. Like, I ain't never going to cell with one of them. Nigga, I ain't with that shit. You know, I used to be that dude at one time, especially when I was in the county, especially before I made it up to Folsom. When I was like on the lower levels, fucking around in Jamestown and shit like that, you know, you talk that mentality because you wasn't being pushed in that situation. They wasn't doing that up there. Well, they were, they were, but not like that. I just never ran across it when I was in Jamestown. So now I'm in Folsom. This is the legendary Folsom State Prison. I'm up here at the same time when they filmed this movie, American Me. Shout out to the homie Kev A. He was up there with me at that same time. Gertz was up there at that same time. Santana. Kev A from South, of course. T Bam 115 Neighborhood was up there with me. Lil Ant 111, rest in peace. Big Tootie 111, rest in peace. Anyway, they put me in the cell with a bro named D Dog from Black Peach Stone Bloods. But he wasn't at the cell when I go in there. I go in there, I see the red rag. I'm like, wow. So what I do, first go in there, I think I had on my state issue shit. I had on the jeans, the boots, or whatever, the blue shirt, because, yeah, because you're moving through the hallways and shit. So I get up in there, and I see the red flag on the, hanging from the bottom bunk. I'm like, ah, nah, this is a new experience to me. You a young crip, you're going to experience that at some point in time, you're doing time in prison. You're young blood, you're going to experience that at some point in time in prison. It's going to happen. So I see that. I'm like, all right, so what I do, I change clothes. I take off these state jeans, the state shirt, and these state boots. What I do, I had on all blue. <laughs> we was able to get blue back then. I put on my blue shorts and my blue sweatshirts and my white chuck with the blue strings. The blue shorts is just some sweatpants I had. You know, that's how we got them. You cut them, and you hem them up yourself. And I even had the blue skull cap. I made the skull cap off a t-shirt I had. and I, No matter of fact, I made it off the pants. Once you cut the pants off the shorts, then you get the piece right there and you sew, get somebody sewed up. So I had the skull hat. So it was all that loud royal blue. You know, the blue, the Crenshaw blue. You know, something posted up in the cell. Now I'm on my bunk, just sitting up on the bunk. Now I'm waiting for whatever's going to happen because I'm in this cell. This is a blood cell. I'm waiting to see wherever it's going to go, where it's going to go. You know what I'm saying? This time I'm 21, so I'm with the shits. This, we, we banging up here. It's cricket. And at the time, I was just, it, it was new to me. It was something that I was just be facing. Like, okay, now what you going to do? He put you in the cell with the blood. How you going to react to that? I'm the same person who in, in the past and said something about other people being in the cell with blood. Other crips. I had something to say about that shit. Now, I'm faced with it. What you going to do? Are you going to go up in there? <laughs> Are you going to go in that cell? Hell yeah, I'm going in that cell. Because the homies will press me if I don't go in there. You better get up in there and go see what's happening. You better not turn around and say, I can't go in that cell. You go up in there. I don't give a damn. That's what we do in there. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people are like, no, nah, I ain't going to the cell with him. He a dumb move. I'm going to just kick it out here so y'all find me in the cell. Or I'm not going in there with him. He a crib. He a keyway. No. My homie's like, nigga, get up in there. Steve, you better go up in there. And whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Get your ass up in there. I already knew that. So it wasn't no like, all right, cuz I'm not going in there. You know what I'm saying? It's a blood seal. I ain't going there. Nah, nigga, I'm up in there. And I put on all my blue and sat up on the top bunk. Wait for him to come in and tell me what I couldn't do. And whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. So while I'm sitting up in there, my homie Ten Deuce Joker come through there. Now, he like, oh, you in d Dog cell. d Dog cool? Like, who is d Dog? <laughs> he like, homie from the jungles. That be, that be balling with us on the court. You know what I'm saying? Then my old celly Kilo from Six Deuce East Coast come over there. And a whole bunch of other crips coming through there. Big Monk, rest in peace, come through there. They all, the homies all coming because Crazy over here now and everybody know Crazy with the blood cell. So they coming over here like, 
Oh, cause you straight. D Dog cool. D Dog good people. No, D Dog, D Dog been down. At the time, D Dog had been down maybe like 11 years. You know what I'm saying? He wanted cats who came from San Quentin, Old Fossil. So I'm like, all right. And they start trying to describe it to him. I didn't even know. So now the homies been pushed off from the cell. Now here come the buds. I think dude might have named, might have been Cowhead or somebody from Peach Stone or somebody. But the homies came, they looked through, the, they like, they, <laughs> I know they tripping because they looked through the holes, like, where the homie at blood? They looked because he had just got a package and shit, so they looking for it, like, where the homie at blood? And they peeked and they like, oh, you know, you could tell, oh, but niggas didn't say nothing because we, we ain't dissing like that, but like, oh, you know, like, I mean, you know, I mean, they were blew down and this nigga said, he ain't there. But then he show up real quick, he worked in the kitchen. He don't come to the cell. He like open the door. So I'm like on the on the top bunk. I'm like, you know, I don't really know who D Dog is. So I'm just like, you know, man, this the life I signed up for. We got to do what we got to do. He opened the hell. They let him in the cell and shit. Hey, D Dog coming. Hey, what's up, man? I'm D Dog. Black Peach Stone. They're like, you know, I was kind of like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, I was like kind of like, hey, hey, what's up, man? I'm Crazy from Raymond. I'm, like, yeah, I know who you is. I see you joking them homie. Yeah, woo, woo, yeah. For all, all them, like, yeah. I said, yeah, man, make yourself comfortable. I got a package right now, so I'm right back. I got to go to R&R. So he go, he dip. He just come in, take off his shit, get his whatever he had to get, his ID, whatever he had to do to go to R&R. No, he get his bag or some shit. And he dip out. So now I'm like, damn, you know, that was, that's it. You know what I mean? I was kind of like, well, that's that's how I went. You know what I mean? Like, all right. So he go over there, then he come back with his package. He bust the package out. He like, hey, homie, there you go, dude. And I'm like, you know, he older than me, no doubt. You know what I mean? He'd been down maybe 11 years at that time. So, I mean, he'd been down to like 81 or some shit. He two or something like that. So, now he and I'm like, yeah, man, I know all y'all homies. I know all the Ramies around here. I was in San Quentin. I knew Lil Kook and all the rest of them and Spark. I, he started naming names and shit. I'm like, all right. But he's like, yeah, man, it's for you. It's for you. Like, I didn't understand it. But I did understand it because it was going on all around me. You know what I mean? But I had the mentality because I was... I was you know, my first time in level four prison, I'm in Folsom. And, you know, nigga, you in Folsom. Nigga, you better be ready up here. You know, the way this shit look, this is, you know, this is Folsom. And, you know, you know, we get to these kind of places when you're young, you go with that mentality. And it's like, we kind of keep the reputation of that prison going. The same with Pelican Bay. You know, you get to these prisons, it's like the name of the prison just stay in your head. Like, where you at? So you perform, you function differently. So I'm like, I'm in Folsom. He was straight with it. He was like, all right, bro, do your thing. Woo, woo. I'm about to move, man. I'm about to go back with the homie. I'm finna go over here. Woo, woo. I'm like, all right, well, I'm about to find me a cell. He about to move out. He's like, you can have this cell, homie. So we talked all night, you know, until we fell asleep. And, you know, dude was cool as fuck. You know what I mean? But, you know, you're young. You don't know these things. You're going through situations like that. You get put in the fire. Because sometimes you're going to sell with some people, and they ain't having it. Like, nah, ain't no crypt coming up in this cell, homeboy. You got to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Some bloods is like that and some crips is like that. You know what I mean? And some crips is like that with other crips and some bloods is like that with other bloods. It's like, nah, you, you, you know, then it go down. You know, it was some kind of situation. But I was braced. I was prepared for that type of situation, but it didn't. Dude coming in, older cat, been down, had life. You know, he was smooth. That's why he was cool. He approached it like a G. He like, you know, I'm not no young nigga. I'm not with that shit. I haven't been down a lot, 11 years. I don't, you know, he ain't in here just tripping off blood and crip shit no more. When you, when you be down in prison for a long time like that, you don't be on that shit. You grow out of that shit. Because you, like you said, you learn to deal and live with these dudes because these dudes come to your age. You go to their age. We help each other, support each other on some black shit. But, you know, like I said, this is my first time getting to a level four. Coming from a shoe term, a suspended shoe term in Jamestown. So my whole mentality is kind of like, you know, well, you know. But the homies told me, nigga, it's cool. You ain't worried about nothing in that dude. It's straight. Just kick it. You all good. You all good. So, you know, I'm young, shit, but it was cool. But D-Dog was a good dude, man. Shout out to D-Dog. I hope he made it out, man. D-Dog from Black Peach Stone. D-Dog was cool. Dude was older than me. But the, the night, one night I stayed in the cell with him. We chopped it up. Uh, uh, he shared a lot of game with me, man. That's why I say I learned a lot of shit, man. I've been shaped because I've been around so many different people. A lot of times when I throw these names out here, a lot of these older cats who've been down, it's just to show y'all the type of people that I've been around and the environments I've been around. I done been around a lot of what you call heavy hitters in this gang culture. And then that shit then rubbed off on me because I done soaked it up. Chris Bloods, BGFs, Southsiders, even skinheads, bro. I know some solid ass skinheads I done met over years, bro, that I done fuck with, man. Just been on some shit like, you know, he ain't all just racist. It's just, I know skinheads who went to prison and became skinheads with just regular white dudes on the streets. Got to the pen and turned skinheads. But it's like, man, 
you ain't you, you ain't not a racist dude. You you're just just falling up under the program, kind of like in a sense. Because I think like with a lot of the white dude, it's that you know you see the blacks and the Mexicans, the blacks and the others or whatever. We we all with gangs, but the whites don't have gangs like that. You know what I mean? Besides the skinheads, used to be the Nazi lowriders, and then the, of course the ABs and shit like that. Unless they in a the bike gang, so they don't have gangs like we got street gangs. So when they're you know most of the whites is like non affiliate, but you get a lot of them that want to be part of something. And they find something like the skinheads or used to be the Nazi lowriders. They just want to be part of some kind of clique or something because everybody else in here is gang, but ganged up. So they become like that. I knew dudes like that. I knew a dude like that from Orange County. Like, come on, dude. You know what I mean? You, you, I've been knowing you, dude. You All of a sudden now you got this shit on you. What's up with that? You know what I mean? But still, we had an understanding before that. I know what he was doing. He was just trying to fit in. I ran across this cat years later. But I'm saying all to say this. You learn a lot from different people from different backgrounds. You don't have to just be your own. You don't have to just be a crip. You don't have to just be a blood. You learn a lot from a lot of people. You just gotta listen. And that's the problem because people don't listen. You judge before you listen. You don't know what you're missing. I like that, Ron. I just made that shit up. I should have been a rapper. Anyway, man, hope everybody having a good one. It's always go Cowboys on mine, man. Yeah, Georgetown is balling too right now. They all right. You know, it's still early, but I support my squads, man. Yeah. Anyway, y'all, y'all have a blessed weekend. Whatever you're doing, just stay focused. If I didn't shout you out, shout you out on this one. Shout out Travis Starks, bro. My bad. Travis Starks, once again, thanks for the super chat, man. Man, if anybody I miss y'all didn't shout you out this time. I'm going to shout you out in the next one, man. I just believe in shouting y'all out, giving y'all props. Giving y'all props for supporting me, man. I mean, thank y'all. Y'all help me. I wouldn't be where I'm at. I'm almost at 5,000 in a minute. And then from there, we keep going. It's all about growth and progress. Remember that. Growth and progress, elevation. Let's get there. Peace.